And here we go. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Dayfy.com's week uh, weekend review. All right. And my name is Hugh. Aaron may or may not uh, join us a little bit later on here. Not really sure. Uh, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be talking to him in a little bit. But it is Sunday, August the thirteenth, twenty twenty three. And I got to go through this disclaimer here. Uh, keeps the uh, lawyers uh, busy, I guess. I'm not really sure why we need to, <laughs> but uh, tell you what, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a minute to just read this over, and uh, understand that um, you know the way this works. This is this is according to the the law. We have to we have to tell you this. All right, we have to tell you that by attending this webinar, you fully understand, and accept the financial risks involved in trading securities. The risk of loss can be substantial. You should carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your personal investment objectives and financial resources. You also understand that you're not receiving any advice as to what I want to buy or sell, but are simply receiving information for educational purposes only. Any decisions concerning your trade are solely your own about your personal objectives and risk tolerances. You alone are responsible for all your own trading and past performance does not guarantee future results. Charts are courtesy of TD Ameritrade, Thinkorswim, and Tasty Works, Tasty Trade. Uh, I should probably change that to Tasty Trade because that is their new name. So let's just go back to that and change that. Tasty Trade. Tasty Trade. All right. I think that's right. All right, now that we got that going. Okay, there we are. We're back. Week in review. We're going to talk about tonight. This is what we're going to go over here, folks. Uh, we're going to go over, um, give you a bit of an introduction. Uh, why should you listen to us? That's a good question. And uh, a lot of validity to that. Who who are we that you should even listen to or uh, entertain at all? Uh, what experience do we have? What do we know anyway? What do I know? I don't know anything, right? Uh, you'll probably be right about that. We'll give you a weekend review and a look at the upcoming week. And we'll do a little fireside chat. I got some really cool stuff to talk about here. Um, although I can't. I'll talk. I'll talk a little bit about stuff. I, I know I'm not allowed to say too much, but I think I'm going to open up a little bit here. Uh, and also uh, your next steps and what you should do. All right, so I take it that you're all here because you want to make some money, you want to change your lifestyle, you want to improve your your uh, your your lifestyle now. Maybe you want to uh, help out your kids financially. Maybe uh, help them with a down payment on a new house, or maybe uh, your grandkids send them to college or something. Whatever you want to do. Maybe you want to buy something new and exciting. Uh, you know, a lot of things, a lot of things going on. But I'll tell you. Um, I had this conversation with somebody the other day. He said, oh, money doesn't buy happiness. I said, yeah, I guess you're right. It doesn't. But it sure makes the, uh, but sure makes it a lot easier when, uh, when um, you know, when you're getting through life and, and you have some money, you don't have to worry about, uh, about paying your bills, right? I think we spend a lot of time uh, worried about these kinds of things. And if you, if you don't have to worry about that, it sure makes life a lot easier. Uh, because when you have money, you have power. And when you have money, you can, you know, you obviously have, you know, the uh, the ability to choose what you want to do when you want to do it. You can go places. You can do a lot of things. I don't have to tell you that's that's, that's redundant. Anyway, uh, I've been rich and I've been poor, and it's much better to be rich than poor. Uh, I, I like the way that sounds. All right, so uh, a bit of a background about myself. Um, I never went to school to learn how to trade. I mean. Uh, when I went to uh, college, we did uh, take a take a few days, I'm sure, on the, on the stock market, what it is, and stocks and bonds and different things like that. But it was very, uh, very uh, academic, you know, back in those days. And we didn't have the Internet back in those days. So, I mean, that's not what I went to school for. I went to school to be, uh, you know, an accountant. <laughs> I never did get my accounting papers. I became an internal auditor. I think I didn't have the personality. That's what it was. Um, but I... Uh, but I enjoyed it, and you know, and I was an internal auditor for an insurance company. All right, so I was in the corp for corporate America, in one of the top, uh, you know, five hundred uh, companies out there and stuff, and uh, it was good. Uh, and like the uh, good salaried employee back in the day, that's what we used to do, and I'm sure many of you do that, have done that. You go through school, you get your degree, you go get a job, you hand off a lot of your money to my your your financial advisor to invest for your retirement, and you uh, you put in your time and. Count down the days. I remember one chap we had in the office there. He actually had a calendar. He, he actually had the number of days counted till his retirement. I thought, what a way to go through life. You got to do what you dig, dig what you do, because that's really what life's all about. Uh, what, what, what's the fun of going to work counting down the days until you retire? Uh, and then I said to 
I said, uh, Don, what are you going to do in retirement anyway? You know, you have this thing, you know, you're, you're spending all your life working. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, but um, so it turned out at one point, um, I uh, when I opened up an envelope one day, because I, I, I neglected to do that. I They would send me these statements once in a while, but I, I used to just stack them up. I never, I never bothered to open these things and to see how much money I have in my retirement account. I figured one day I'll be pleasantly surprised and I'll have all this money and I'm going to be, so oh my gosh, live happily ever after. But after a few years, I thought I'd better check to see just how, how is this thing growing? And uh, I just about died when I realized I only had about half the capital I put in. You can imagine my upset that, okay, so... I worked for how much all these years and okay, uh, very, very upsetting. And obviously I had some words with my uh, financial guy and uh, essentially just told him, just, just cut me a check for whatever you got left. You don't, you don't have the uh, wherewithal to, to grow this the way I wanted to. We, we're not on the same page. Actually, that's not quite true. The words I used, I cannot repeat here. <laughs> I have watered that down for you because I have so much respect for you all. Uh, we had some very choice words. I had choice words for him. He's 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 scrambling to try and save the account, right? I said, no, I'm not interested anymore. I, I just want my money now. Whatever you have left, just cash it out. Uh, anyway, I, I went there the next day and got my uh, my check. And uh, on the way home, I resigned to the fact emotionally, mentally that okay, I will probably be pouring coffee at my local coffee shop when i'm 60 70 80 90 years old whatever i live to and uh, if, if they will have me uh social security wasn't looking all that attractive still isn't and um uh I, but but i was i'll be damned if my kids are going to suffer and not go to school because I believe that we have an obligation to our future generations to bring them up in a better better world than what we left them in, than what we had. And I, and I vowed then that, okay, we are now in the internet age. We have discount brokers. I'm comfortable with numbers and I know a little bit about risk and different things. So I just have to learn how to do this myself because we all literally now have all the information we need right at our fingertips, just like anybody else, just like they do. What makes them professional? Because maybe they have some letters behind their name. They took some courses. Uh, I got a bunch of letters behind my name, too, if I dig out deep enough and, and go through them all. Does that can impress anybody? Um, you know, but, uh, but, but I thought, okay, so I set out to learn this stuff. And there are a lot of courses out there. And I probably, uh, I probably uh, you know, ran into some of you in some of these courses myself. And, uh, but I was, uh, I was the, um, I was that guy. I was always that guy in the courses, the guy that would ask the questions, you know. So Mr. Presenter, you trade this yourself. You're telling us all these wonderful strategies and techniques you're using and how wonderful your program is. So you're using this and you are making money too. And you know what? Not a single one said, yes, they are. They all said, oh no, I don't trade this. I'm just the presenter. It's too risky for me. I thought, really, really, you're you're telling me that I should put my hard-earned money into something you're telling me, but you you will not invest in your own words. I just promptly uh, folded up my books and I'm out of there. One time they even asked me to leave, say, not a problem. Believe me, you don't have to ask me that twice. Uh, but they were a lot of these courses. I mean, I did learn things. It's not like I didn't learn anything, you know. I mean, I did learn a lot of stuff, but. There's always something missing in these courses. And I don't know if you noticed that too. Some of you guys should. has anybody here taken any courses? Can you can you put it up in the Q and A box if you've taken any of these courses out there? I don't want to name them because I don't really, you know, I'm not putting anybody down. Any. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you for that, Johnny. He says that uh, closing the blinds didn't help. I can still see. Lol, I gotta love it. Um, Phil, my kids are doing fine. I, I want, I want, I want another cruise with my wife and best friend. Okay uh okay good stuff all right yeah um any yeah there are a lot of a lot of people are taking courses okay uh, no more courses for me you know what and um so i learned a lot i mean a lot of different things but there's always something missing i always felt something was missing from all of them and and a lot of these things did not address the reality of trading 
the actual emotions you feel and how to address things like proper money management in the real world. They would use things like, um, I don't know, stop losses or different things. Well, it didn't really quite work with the way I was trading and, and stuff. And, and anyway, a lot of these things, but I, I did discover that over, so I started trading equities and I looked at futures and options and Forex and all these things. And eventually I stumbled on day trading options on SPY. Now SPY is the stock that follows the S&P 500. So the, the basket of the top 500 stocks, the cream of the crop, there are thousands of stocks out there. All right. And uh, one thing you don't want to do is get into stocks that, that aren't really very good. I mean, I don't know how easy it is to get yourself up in the stock market, but it must be okay because there are thousands of stocks out there. But I, I felt that um, if I can just track the top 500, I have to just look at where the economy is going and uh, and just kind of follow the economy. And I can usually pretty well read where the economy is going to go. Now, I'm not that smart to determine where it's going to go a year from now or six months from now or a month from now or even a week from now. But we've got a pretty good idea where it's going today and possibly tomorrow or even the next few days. And that is the beauty of what we do. We don't care about a week from now or a month or a year from now. I mean, there are a lot of strategies out there. Oh, you know, AI and this and that. And, well, maybe, but you're talking long term. Um, I don't know what long term is anymore for me, uh, other than that I'm 68 years old and I'm not really looking for long term investments anymore. Uh, I do have some real estate that I own, and um, uh, to me, that's you know, it's not very liquid. Obviously, you have to if you want to sell something, you have to kind of put it for sale and, and wait and showings and different things. You know that, but with the stock market now, uh, the way I trade long term is to the end of the day, uh, which is pretty cool. So we like to get in, make our money, get in, get out, then enjoy the rest of the day. So now I am sort of, I, I want to say semi-retired. You know, this is what I love to do. And this is what I like to do. And this is what I do. But I also enjoy spending time with grandkids and my kids and with friends, uh, you know, out on a boat, like on a day like this, or down at the beach or flying my plane or, or what have you, or just kind of hanging around. And it's all about lifestyle. And I think that's really why you're here. You want to learn, you know, how to really enjoy your lifestyle, right? And whatever that is, whether you want to take a cruise or, you know, anything. It could be anything at all. Anyway, um, that's my background. And then when I started making some serious money on the market, people started asking me, oh, Hugh, can you show me? And that's when we started Day Trade Spy, which was way back in 2010. So we are now in our uh, 14th year doing this. And last year, we joined forces with Eagle Financial Publishing. So they are the ones that are actually... Uh, managing things and uh, helping out. And it's just phenomenal to have them. A great group of people. Uh, although um, uh, sometimes uh, they slip up with things and I'll tell you some of the secrets that they have slipped up on that's going to actually benefit you. So today, here's my background in the trenches learning on how to trade options. This, folks, is the real deal, folks, because I have, uh, I've learned some really cool things that you're not going to learn anywhere else. And I like to teach because I enjoy seeing other people succeed. Uh, I feel it's it's a way of giving back too from what I've learned the hard way. And if I can if I can save you uh, the learning curve or save you uh, the uh, the um, um, you know you know a lot a lot of money in the process. I mean I, I spent a lot of money learning this stuff. I had I had a lot of losses. I probably lost more money than everybody here on online. You know over the over the years. But I also knew there's a lot of money in this business. So I never gave up. So if there's one word, I would say it's persistence. I never, never, never gave up. So anyway, uh, we look for short-term breakout trades for small, multiple daily gains, okay? Now, uh, with me there is the love of my life, my beautiful Bernice Mountain dog, Lucy. Uh, <laughs> she's, uh, I'm really fortunate to still have her. She's in her uh, 12th year now. And uh, these things are only supposed to live between six and uh, 10 years, six and eight years, I should say, six and eight years. But she's uh, she's just got a clean bill of health the other day. And uh, very, very happy to have her. And uh, I love her to pieces. Anyway, she's got me well-trained. <laughs> so now my partner in crime, I don't see him on yet. Uh, he probably joined us a little bit here. 
Uh, I know he was pretty tired because actually we had quite the session last night. We were up for hours discussing something. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Stevens, he's mastered this deep dive technical analysis back in his teens. I think he had a brokerage set up um, before he could drive a car. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, he's th this guy is very, very intelligent. Don't underestimate him. He used to be a technical analyst for a $150 million uh, fund, commodity fund. And uh, his specialty is identifying excellent longer term high probability trades. A lot of technical analysis and the stuff that he comes out with is, uh, is, is mind boggling to say the least. So I had no idea, uh, but, but in talking to him, he, he lives and, and he, he lives and breathes the stock market. He lives and breathes the stock market. And then when he doesn't, he's out with his kids in the sports field. And uh, I'm sure he's doing that right now because he, um, that's what uh, that's, uh, and I'm okay with that. I told him, don't worry about it. If you can't come, I got it covered. Anyway. All right. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a, it's not a quiz. I just want to get an idea what your daily goal trading options is, is here. So please use the questions, but I just want to get an idea of what you are looking to make in the options world here. Uh, how many of you would be happy with a a hundred to two hundred dollars a day, b two hundred to five hundred a day, or c five five hundred to a thousand a day, or d over a thousand? Okay, because that kind of gives me an idea as to which way to go with this whole uh, webinar here tonight. Uh, because uh, you know we can we can actually uh, you know dumb it down or get deeper into a, into the deep deep end deep dive. Uh, Aaron and I have a saying. It's uh, when our when our indicators unite, our trades ignite. I'll tell you the origin of that. It's that my simple way of trading. I'm a simple kind of a guy. I like I like uh, I like clean cut simplicity. So when my indicators say one thing, and then his completely separate, completely independent indicators say something else, and when we both say the market is going up, you better be buying call options because the market is probably going up unless some completely bizarre outlier news item comes up and knocks it back down. But anyway, it's not a story. So please put in the questions box, A, B, C, or D. What are you looking to make per day? All right. Johnny L, well, A, okay. After all these years, you should be a D. But anyway, it is what it is. Um. All right, hang on. Let me go back here. Where, where is it? Here? Okay, it's kind of going down here. Okay, Paling B for now. You got it, Lori. Good to have you on B or C. Okay, we can we can work with these guys and gals. I love it. You know, we can work with all of these, and I love it. I love it. Yes, and that's that's what we do. That's what we do. Excuse me. I've been talking all day, believe it or not, and uh, my throat is a little dry. So excuse me while I get a drink here. Uh, I love the sparkling water, lemon, lemon Perrier water here. Anyway, all right, <clears throat> gives me an idea. All right, so here's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a little bit of a fireside chat. Actually, he's going to call it a beachside chat. All right, and I want to know what your experience is in trading options or training courses. What is your pain? Why would you not want to join what we have? Or what is it that you're, uh, you know, that, that, that's holding you back from pulling the trigger on a trade or making you get in too late or, you know, out too early or out too late or whatever? Uh, these are questions. All right. You can put them in the questions box or thinking about them as we get up there. Uh, another question here. Do you have any seed capital? You can, can you get your hands on five thousand dollars just to get started. You don't even need that much, but if you if you can do five thousand dollars, you're just that much ahead of the curve here. Uh, and you ex you accept the fact that maybe a training first rather than jumping in is is a good thing. <laughs> Invest in yourself first and then the market. You will not believe how many people uh, you won't believe how many people just want to jump right in, and they figure that well I'm going to learn on the job. Well, except the problem there is that when you lose your money, you know, uh, it's not really cool. Uh, and then what happens is now you got to put money back in and, you know, you're disenchanted with the, with the whole thing. And so many people that do that, they tend to uh, 
break away from the market and trading and get shy and and uh, and, and they, they never see him again they they go back to their uh, their other lives working for a living they go back to a job now you all know what job stands for right that's actually an acronym j o b it means just over broke and you also happen to know that a job today is no uh, security for the future how many people i know i'm sure we all know people who've been with a company for many many years and well, sorry, and we're downsizing or somebody younger and cheaper is going to come to replace you. Somebody who's maybe more up on the technology or somebody we just like better, or maybe we're trying to get new blood in the company. So we're going to just, you know, buy you out or send you on your way with a, with a buyout package and, and good luck. You know, it's, that's just the way it is. Right. Uh, but I think that if you know how to trade, you will actually have that security in yourself and, uh, um, you know, and you'll, you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about these things. All right. So that's the things, those are the things we're going to be talking about. So here's the week in review. I want to get on the week in review here, folks. This is the way the market looked this last week. Pretty choppy, a lot of swinging going on. And you know what? I neglected to tell you what happened during the week. So uh, in the, uh, in my analysis here, uh, so I'm just going to uh, pull it up here. And kind of go over what uh, what we had. Oh my gosh, I kind of a uh, I apologize here. It wasn't quite ready for today. Okay, so here's Monday. Monday uh, we had. Uh, let me just go over this. Hang on one second here. I want to go over what we were uh, dealing with here. Uh, bear with me. Oh my goodness, I I'm not really sure what happened here. Um, I guess I spent too much time out on the beach under the umbrella there with my buddies here. All right, so Monday was a relatively uh, quiet day for news, which is this segment right here, okay? Um, and um, we had a consumer credit month to month. This was on the 7th, uh, and the uh, the report was uh, was higher than, than expected. Uh, not a big deal. In fact, it's... Uh, uh, you know, it's it's a low impact item. Basically, it was a low impact day, and when you have low impact days, we had a lot of technical trading, and the market just shot up here from about four forty eight up to about four fifty one. We were pushing. We had a lot of resistance at four fifty one. I know that that was actually a real pivot area, and the market ran up to there. So on these low news or no news days, you'll often see that happening where uh, the stock just uh, just goes goes right up to. Uh, um, um, the market just likes to move up on its own. Uh, I'm just clearing off some of these um, these boxes that I had on on here that I that I should have actually looked at earlier. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. No, let's go back here. Okay, just bear with me for half a second here. Okay, that was Monday. We ran up. We had, and we had some technical uh, a lot of resistance at 4:51. The market uh, fell back down on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday, what was going on Tuesday, uh, we actually had, um, again, a, a relatively low, low impact news day, but that was basically uh, FOMC Harker was speaking. Harker is rather hawkish, probably pushed the market down a little bit uh, with uh, with possibly a threat of, uh, of, um, of uh, CPI numbers coming in. We're a little bit nervous there. Came down, found some support at the uh, 446 level, uh, and then and then technically we we rose again uh, on a low news day, um, and um, we actually had the um, um, I don't know if the Fitch thing I think that was still from last week. There's still some nervousness perhaps with the CPI numbers coming in on Wednesday, which is what happened. That's what uh, uh, no, it was actually Thursday. The uh, the CPI numbers came in, which is that over here. So we had a lot of technical trading in here. That's what all these bounces are, okay? Uh, bounces off Fibonacci levels, bounces off uh, Andrew's pitchfork, bounces off pivot points. Uh, There's a lot of lot of strong resistance at 451. The market tried to get up there, uh, and it came down to 445, a lot of support. It's just a lot of uh, this range-bound trading, even though it was really, really a, a wild swing. But I guess the, the main news item came in on, on Thursday with the CPI numbers. And, and I think the market was very uh, temperamental because of that. 
and the initial um, numbers there came in. So the CPI year over year came in at 3.2%. They're expecting 3.3%. So it was showing us that inflation is a little bit, it's a little bit uh, lower than they're expecting. So that was a very positive for the market. Pushed the market up from about 448 back up to through 451. But again, some very strong resistance. The bears wrestled it back down again. Probably on the fact that the um, that unemployment claims also came in uh, a little bit lower than expected, which suggests that uh, and and of course, so when you get all these news items, the pundits analyze it, they they chew it all up, up and and uh, take it apart and everything else. But if the unemployment claims came in lower than expected, they were expecting two hundred thirty one thousand. They came in at two hundred forty eight, and uh, and it was also. Uh, uh, so it was lower than expected. So that means that the uh, labor market is still very strong. So undoubtedly they're talking about, uh, and Harker speak, spoke on uh, Thursday as well. So undoubtedly they're talking about how, well, the labor market is still very strong and uh, this could still be, uh, you know, uh, something, uh, uh, you know, uh, threatening higher interest rates later. And we're going to see what the feds do, what the feds say. But uh, that was that was on Thursday. On uh, Friday, uh, PPI numbers came in. All right, market worried about the PPI numbers. They came in at 0.3 percent uh, month over month, and the core PPI, which is the PPI, excludes food and energy, that also came in at 0.3 percent. Both of those were higher than the expected 0.2 percent. So that is actually inflationary. That is actually inflationary. That came in at 8.30 in the morning, and that pushed the market down here at 8.30. And the market slowly tried to recover, never got past that 4.46 in a, in a big way. Uh, so that's kind of where we we, know, we dipped down to 4.43. Uh, and that's there's, there's a little bit of an anomaly on that, because usually the CPI and the PPI numbers, when they're close together, uh, they, they sort of support each other. But in this case, we actually had conflicting information on that. Also at 10 o'clock on uh, Friday, the uh, consumer sentiment report came out, came in at 71.2. They're expecting 71.4. So maybe that's another reason why the market got pushed up a little bit there, a little bit of technical trading. So we did push in to fill in the gap on Friday. But anyway, that's what happened. Um, it's not so much where we, where we uh, were that's important as much as where we're going. But here's kind of what happened during the week. The S&P did drop uh 0.3%. Nasdaq dropped 1.9%, but the Dow actually rose 0.6%. Um so year to date here the numbers here. But after a strong rally, markets did give back a little bit already in August. A uh, bit of a healthy breather though. Okay. It's not you know it's it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. This how this this gives us opportunities here. Um with even the large cap uh, what they call the magnificent seven that also gave back five percent this week. Magnificent Seven. These are this is the basket of uh, of these big the seven big ones: Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, Google, Meta, and Tesla. All right, so you group these guys together, and uh, they were down five percent. Uh, I think Microsoft. No, what was it? Uh, I can't remember which one was actually on, in the positive, but uh, these seven stocks together they were down about five percent. Uh, but the good news is this rally underpinning uh, is, is underpinned by strong fundamentals. So um, it's okay. You know, they're, they're, they're just taking a breather and it'll probably continue on up, uh, you know, as, as the market continues uh, to, to push on. Uh, inflation does continue to trend down. All right. And the Fed's, uh, they still may remain on hold for now as the economy holds up better than expected. And you can see what some of these, uh, uh, these other, uh, uh, indexes are done. Magnificent Sun was down 5.4%. NASDAQ 5.1%. Russell's down 4%. There's the S&P down 2.9, say 0.3%. And the Dow's down 1.1%. So um, that's that's where the week was. Now, here's a seasonal chart. Let's just expand this here and uh, see what's going on as we take a look at the uh, seasonality of it. Uh, if we look at last week, uh, SPY actually rose about five points. Uh, so uh, those of you not familiar, this is a seasonal chart. That blue line is where SPY is now. The red line is a composite of the last 
five years daily closing balance. And uh, looking at this, I know it's hard to read because of the scale, but seasonally SPY ended up staying the same uh, for about the, the following week. It didn't, it didn't uh, fluctuate that much, uh, maybe very, very slightly, but it was, uh, it was basically uh, flat. So we're in kind of a flat. And I think seasonally, we're probably going to be going to the downside uh, in the next month or so. But let's take a look at forward looking. Let's see what's going on here. Monday, low news, no news day. Tuesday, we've got some retail sales. Uh, New York Manufacturing Index, they also call this the uh, Empire State Manufacturing Index. Wednesday, the FOMC minute uh, meeting minutes will be released from the last meeting. And that usually gives a little bit of a bounce onto the markets. Uh, we have oil inventories. We'll see what that brings. Uh, usually not a big mover, but if there's not a lot of other news that's moving the markets, then the inventories, the oil inventories can have an effect. On uh, Thursday, a little bit, uh, a little bit more, we've got... Um, uh, a little higher impact, I should say. We've got the unemployment claims coming in and the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index also comes in. And on Friday, again, we have a low or a no news day. Uh, now, of course, you don't know what what's going to be put on the schedule between now and then, but as of right now, this is kind of what I expect. So uh, coming into the next couple of months here, August and September could be uh, more volatile as typical corrections uh, after rallies do average about a, minus eight percent and but the uh, pullback may not be uh, long lasting and they did studies on this since 1950 there were 35 such pullbacks after rallies of 15 percent or more with an average recovery time of six months but they don't expect that to happen again uh, to be that uh, bad they expect the fundamentals still to be strong to weather any deep or prolonged correction so i think we're on track for any kind of a um, uh, you know, a soft landing, if that's what they're talking. I, I hear various reports on that, but so far we have not had a major recession that they're expecting. So that's all pretty good. We're, we're holding on really nicely. Bottom line, low volatility on Monday midweek. Volatility should be elevated into the FOMC me, um, uh, meeting minutes and then lower uh, volatility back on Friday. See what happens there. So trading could be range bound early and the end of the week. Possibly you might want to lower your expectations. If you're normally looking for 6 or 7%, you might want to go down to 5 in those days. Uh, but watch for some pretty good swings midweek and just pay attention and make some money. And that's kind of what the idea is. I love volatility to a point. You know, if it goes really nuts, then it's kind of tough because now you don't know uh, how it's going to work out. And you could actually uh, uh, get, get whipsawed out pretty good. But well, some volatility is good. Okay, it's not all bad. So... All right, let's get into uh, let's get into uh, the uh, let's see here. There are many opportunities daily. We teach you how to spot them, how to trade them, folks, and I think she'll agree on that. So I want to tell you a little bit about our trading room. All right, and I know you've heard this before, but I cannot stress how important it is for you to get in on this, especially now. And I'll tell you about that in a little bit. So those of you not familiar with the trading room, it is moderated by expert traders, uh, Aaron and yours truly. All right. This is where strategies come alive every morning, 920 to 1030. And they're going to learn and earn from the best. These are interactive sessions. They're exciting trading. We teach what we trade. We trade what we teach. You can watch us make real trades, real setups using real money. If you have any questions, you can in interact with us, get them answered in real time, real answers, honest answers. Might not be the answer you you know you, that you want to hear. We're going to give it to you straight. We do not, uh, we don't sugarcoat anything. We'll tell you exactly our opinions on uh, on what you know what you are. But we're very respectful. We don't we don't we don't put you down. We don't call, we don't call you names or swear at you or anything. <laughs> Believe it or not, there are people that do. We're not one of them, all right? And we've got the longest running live trading room since 2010 that I know of. And I'm going to tell you right now, this trading room here in the summer, we have extended hours, Mondays, Wednesday, and Fridays. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we go till 11 o'clock. You might not think that's uh, important, but it actually is because we cover a lot of ground till 11 o'clock. Regular sessions end at 10.30. These extended sessions facilitate maybe with more training. And our motto on that one, no one gets left behind. Speaking of getting left behind, I want to say hi to Aaron. I think he's on. Good evening, Aaron. Are you there? Uh, yes, I'm good. Good. Yeah. How are you doing, Hugh? 
Not too bad at all. I'm a little tired, though. I'm going to tell you why in a little bit, because I've been up, oh my gosh, most of the night. If I sound a little sluggish, glad you're here to take up the uh, Slack on stuff, because frankly, I've been up. I, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. And folks, I'm going to tell you in a little bit here, getting in our beachside chat about what happened last night and stuff. But uh, uh, Aaron, you having a good weekend so far? Uh, yeah, it was actually very nice. The weather is uh, it was pretty warm out here, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just spending time with uh, uh, my lady and my daughter, and uh, went to church today, and uh, um, also uh, went, went out to eat this afternoon. Got some got some sushi, and uh, not nothing crazy. Uh, we were thinking about seeing the largest uh, rubber ducky in Maryland uh, that's traveling, but uh, just because of the heat and whatnot, uh, we decided not to drive the six hour round trip. <laughs> Uh, yeah i don't blame it <laughs> to see a rubber duck okay well it was a little different than my weekend i guess uh, yesterday i had to i did a little bit of work i did around the house hey, i went down to home depot uh, to get some wire and the guy that helped me was actually he's very inf informative he's, he, he knew everything about everything electrical i don't know the, these companies they hire the best and uh, he asked me he said uh, do you know how copper wire was invented did you know i don't know did you know did you know this Aaron? do you know how they invented copper wire um, not, no, I don't. It was actually an accident when two internal revenue service, eight auditors, uh, were fighting over a penny. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, yeah. not, not to be, I told, I, not, I, not to be outdone. I told him, Hey buddy, you know, I always try to pay my taxes with a smile, uh, but it turns out the IRS prefers money. And he just laughed at that. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, anyway, that's it. Uh, folks. <laughs> Our, our training sessions started always usually with a usually with a joke. All right, so this is, this is what it was all about. That's but I just kind of a lighthearted song. Good to have you on, Aaron. Good to have you on, and uh, I was just telling everybody here about the uh, day trade spy trading room daily with Aaron and myself, folks. Really, seriously, six ninety nine for three months. Are you kidding me? Uh, this works out to roughly a subway sandwich for. One of us, not both, but just one of us. Maybe, Aaron, we could split one. How's that? Maybe maybe these people will buy us a Subway 12-inch. We can maybe <laughs> split it. And at that, probably just a veggie or something. I don't know. But, yeah. Um, uh, as, long as, as long as it has extra cheese, I'm, I'm fine with whatever you decide. You. <laughs> All right. $6.99. $6.99 for three months. Folks, honestly, I can't tell you why. Uh, not everybody out in the trading world is in this, but I'm going to tell you a little something. So Aaron and I spent hours, literally hours last night, we we're working on this uh, this um, strategy, and uh, we can't tell you too much yet. Uh, and this is actually Aaron's brainchild. I mentioned earlier that Aaron comes from a, a, a background, a very intense technical analysis background he'd been he'd been doing technical analysis well I'll, let me put it this way i think i was still climbing trees at that age and uh, when all the other kids were uh you know were, were running around with sports and maybe chasing the girls or whatever uh you know aaron was was busy reading the wall street journal and analyzing charts <laughs> would it be fair to say aaron you were the nerd of nerds <laughs> i don't know <laughs> oh yeah, well definitely. Uh, yeah, I was I was looking at the patterns and and looking at trying to figure out the patterns in the market and how how they work. And I was reading you know the the major technical books and uh, as well as um, <clears throat> learning strategies like the Andrews Pitchfork and Fibonacci retracements and extensions and and uh, yeah. So uh, I would say I I would say that yeah I, I was I was a nice I was a nice geek that everybody uh, every everybody uh, liked to pick on. Um, I usually kept to myself, um, but uh, I, I was always the one that, that if anybody needed any help, I would help them out. So, yeah, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, before we get too deep in it, so we we can't really tell you a whole lot right now. We will talk a little bit more about it in a few minutes. But uh, I want to kind of go over some of the trades I did the, uh, this this week. Um, well, actually, these are my real trades. These are all my re re trades. They're not cherry picked. They're not just the winners and no losers. These are all the trades I personally did with real money. This is taking from uh, they're taken from Tasty Trade, and uh, those of you who know Tasty Trade know that they do not have a sim account. So these are real trades. Now I did not put on how many contracts I had traded. Uh, didn't want to embarrass anybody or anything. So I just but I want the important thing here is the uh, uh, the entry and and the exits and how much uh, 
how many cents I made on each trade, how long in a trade. And I don't want to kind of bore you with all the analysis here. Just know that here on Monday, I got in, I made 15 cents, 267 to 282. That was a longer trade. I was in that for uh, 52 minutes, almost an hour. On Tuesday, I picked up 14 cents in four minutes, 945 to 949. Notice how that's kind of, you know, these are early day trades, early day trades. Wednesday, picked up 10 cents in two minutes, 937 to 939. On Wednesday, the two trades, 24 cents in three minutes, another six cents in four minutes. And uh, and on Friday, another two trades. I got in uh, the first trade, 16 cents in two minutes and 11 cents in 22 minutes. And uh, if this was only 10 contracts, so I'm just kind of putting it in relation to maybe what most of you will probably want to trade. Uh, if you if this was only 10 contracts, my average buy price would have been uh, $2,320. And uh, the gains for the week came into $960. I don't have an average time. Hang on. Let me just figure out the average time in a trade. Uh, 6.58. Okay. Divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The average time in a trade would have been about 12.7 minutes per trade. And looks like I was done the most. The longest I was in a trade was that first one. Finished up at 10.25. And then the, the second uh, longest was till 10 o'clock. So imagine making this kind of money on, on just a, just a you know, small position. This kind of money. And you're done before most people in office offices take their first coffee break. Now this frees up your time. You can do whatever you want the rest of the day. You can close up, close up shop or you can keep trading if you want. Uh, but I found that making money early on is, is sort of the best. That's uh, what I enjoy doing. And I enjoy, uh, you know, just, you know, have, having fun the rest of the day. Uh, and, and I think that's now, now let me ask in the, in the questions box, would, would any of you be interested in learning how to do this? Uh, and if you if you are, then let me uh, then let me know because I would be very happy to tell you what you should do next to get in on this and how you can learn this. And it's not that difficult making money if you know how. So please write in the questions box if this interests you at all. If not, we can just skip over it and forget about it, and we can wrap it up because I, I can I can do other things tonight, and so can air, right? Uh, well, maybe both already do. Okay, all right. John, okay, good to see you on, John. All right, some yeses coming in. All right, okay. Well, that's good to see. That's good. To see. All right, let me get back to the. Let me get back to the camera here. Here we go. Here we go. All right, good to see. There's some interest in this because I know some people really want to make a lot of money, and I, I know what it is, there, uh, Aaron. And I, I think some people think that they're gonna, you know, spend two hundred dollars and and make a million by the weekend or something. And let's be real. Okay. Let's be real. Uh, that's the reality is, is not really that. Okay. The reality is slow and steady. I think wins the race, uh, at least the way we trade. So this is mostly scalping that I did. And, uh, and I had a lot of fun doing it. My risk factor was very, very low. I never broke a sweat with any of it. Never worried or got concerned about any of it. And, uh, and I think it was just a lot of fun. Fun factor was very high. So, all right, let's get into some questions here as to uh, what your pain is and uh, what you're thinking here. Okay, so a lot of people want to make a hundred to two hundred dollars a day, up to five. I think most people want to make between a hundred and uh, they'd be happy with hundred to five hundred a day. A lot of people also want to make up to a thousand a day. Okay, so depending on how much money you want to put into a trade, that's how. That's how it's going to work out, okay? Um, but uh, so anyway, Aaron and I, I don't know how much we can say here. Aaron, um, we're working on a strategy that'll knock your socks off. It'll blow you away. It'll make everything else in trading irrelevant. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. It Andy. is that good. It is that good. I am looking at you right in the eyes and telling you it is that good. Now, I can't say too much because we still have to pass this by the by the board. 
right? And uh, and they have to uh, they have to determine how they're going to launch this or package it or whatever. But I'm pretty sure of three things. Geez, I wish I could tell them. I'm just dying to her, and I just but I know I know we can't. We can't reveal anything yet. We did a lot of testing on this, and the results are nothing short of I don't know what to tell you. Phenomenal. Uh, and 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 I don't get that impressed anymore. You know what I'm saying? So for me to say this, and for Aaron to say this, and congratulations, Aaron, uh, you did an, an, you. an amazing, awesome job. Uh, but we will be revealing this to you now. This could come as a real quick surprise sooner, maybe rather later. I don't know. We're going to find this out. I think we're going to have a meeting this Tuesday on these things, and these are this is going to be coming up in the agenda. Okay. But three things I know are true, and this is very important that you know this. Number one, this strategy, this new strategy, and we're still doing testing, okay? Now, those of you who know me, and there's a lot of people online here who know me, you know that I don't bring anything out to you unless it's proven and tested time and time and time again. But so far, this has been tested very well, and we're still going to be doing more testing, and we're going to be bringing it up. But number one, this new strategy is absolutely solid gold. This is this is a, a truly an amazing strategy. And I think a lot of people are going to really, really love it. Little more complex than just the simple. I'm not going to, I'm not going to kid you. You have to pay attention. But believe me, it's really worth this. The other thing I want to tell you is that the cost of this new strategy is uh, is not going to be the price of a Subway lunch or half a Subway lunch, okay? Uh, if, um, you know, Aaron, if they if they bought us uh, uh, Chris's Ruth's steak every every day, uh, and they, they knew what this was, Aaron, they would be more than happy to do that. It is that good. They will be thanking us uh, uh, for this. So this is not going to be, uh, you know, peanuts I, I think i think everybody's eager and, and and dying to know at this point uh but I, uh i know we, we, we can't read but we're just but, trying to, we're just trying to whet the appetite for something that's 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 um we 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 we, we uh we had it and i couldn't sleep either i uh and uh to be honest i was up until three o'clock in the morning because i was i was excited i was excited that he was excited i, I was and, so excited I don't I don't usually stay up that late, um, but I just I couldn't sleep. And uh, and so I, I I'm I'm really I'm really happy that, uh, you know, it, it came to me. Um, it came to me in a dream, uh, to be honest with you. You know, I was thinking about a way that we could combine everything that I've ever learned in, in uh, futures in the futures market and kind of make it applicable in the options market um, and uh, how we could teach it and. It's a simple strategy, but it's it has nuances, and so um, it would probably be for um, uh, people that have a little bit of options experience, so they understand exactly what we're doing. But we're going to um, we're gonna we're gonna continue to 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 finalize our testing on this and and get a, a stamp of approval, and then we we were you know <laughs> certified fresh, you know if uh, if you think of it that way. But uh, when when it comes out. When it comes out, it, it will be something that's going to be great for for the trading room, great for all of our subscribers, and and great for um your your trading account. So uh, it's uh, something that uh, it, it kind of came to me in a dream, and and uh, I looked back at the charts, and I and I said, wow, you know, in these volatile markets, it, it's really going to work like a champ, and and uh, people people could make um quite quite a bit of money with this, and it's uh. It's something that I'm very happy to to uh, develop and work with you on. Yeah, and and I could hardly sleep. Uh, just so you know, the sun comes up at six twenty this morning. That's <laughs> weekend. Yeah, I watched it. So uh, the third thing I want to tell you is this, and this is really important, folks. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure the trading room participants will get first notice of the strategy. Okay, trading room people will get first notice of this. So. You will definitely want to be in on the trading room, and you may even be grandfathered into it. I cannot promise this, but uh, and I don't want you to hold that against me, but knowing Eagle the way they are, they will probably grandfather you into this if they go down that path. 
Okay. Um, so this is a really good reason for you to jump in in the trading room, like right away. So you are ready for when we release this new strategy. Uh, and I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be fairly soon. I don't think it's going to be long extended. Um, it's, it's very exciting. I'm, I'm very excited about it. And, and we spent, you know, Aaron, I don't know what time we, I think we were three, four hours. I don't know how long we we're on last night. I'm just go and, and, and we were really drilling it. We were, we were, uh, devil's advocate and testing and, you know, scenarios all over. And, and it's, uh, but we, you know, we want to make this bulletproof. Okay. We want to make this bulletproof for you so that you're not stuck. Yeah. I, I don't so, know if it was. Important. <laughs> yeah. It it was it was a long time we spent last night and we we went through this thing anyway I I'm kind of going in circles with this but uh, really all the more reason you should get on the trading room <laughs> that's how excited we were yeah you, you know you you want to get on it if you're in the trading room you will get first notice of this thing when it comes out and you will have first opportunity and um, you know and I'm not just saying this. Um, I know, I know things are crazy these days and, and stuff and not to, not to get off track, but Aaron, you know, you know, we, I took, you know, we, my wife and I, we took, took the girls to see, uh, Taylor Swift there a month or so ago in uh, New Jersey. And, um, uh, she's opened up, uh, four shows, no, six, six shows in Toronto next year. And, and the girls and everybody tried to get, uh, get tickets uh, to give you an idea, there are now, last I heard, I think yesterday, they, they had 31 million people on the waiting list. 31 million people on the waiting list to get a code to be able to get tickets. Uh, we're not going to do that with you, but we will say that those people in the trading room will be the first to get notice of this and we'll probably be bringing them in um, you know, in chunks, right? So we're not overwhelmed with the system and stuff. So um, it'll be it'll be exciting. And those of you in the trading room, you are going to really benefit from this first and foremost. So that's all I'm going to say right now. Stay tuned. All right. Any more to add on that, Aaron? I uh, I, I think I'm I'm kind of done with that. But uh, oh yeah, no. Uh, I mean, just uh, just that um, when it does come out. And and people master the the strategy. It's it's so simple that it's almost, um, it, it's almost. I don't I don't why know why I didn't think about it sooner, but it, it just came to me. So it's so simple, and it's it's not something that's complex. It just has nuances, and um, and it's really going to help, especially uh, the traders that may have um, lost some money in the past, or maybe have, um maybe have a smaller account it's 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 kind of for the little guy and uh it's it's a way to help the little guy get a little bit more um a little bit more power in the markets so that's that's a very good point i'm glad you brought that up because uh, a lot of people don't have a lot of money to invest so even if you have i don't want to say a few hundred dollars but i think you could probably work this with just uh five hundred dollars would that be unreasonable to say that Aaron? uh yeah i would say i would say I would say it kind of stops the uh, uh, the threshold, you know, that that people to entry that people people might think that they need, you know, oh, I, I need two thousand or three thousand or or ten thousand dollars to get started, you know, literally. Um, it, if after you learn this and, and test it on 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 a demo account, it, you could you could get started probably with as little as five hundred dollars um, in a trading account, and uh, and then if you if you have a few good winners and, and ramp up your your account uh, with with good money management, um, you'd be able to kind of just coast on on what you're on what you're making and and uh, kind of surf the wave of of uh, prob uh, profitability. So. Absolutely. All right, let's get to some questions here. There's one question up on the board here. Why don't you tell us what you're working on when it'll be released or the results? We just can't tell you yet. It's just too premature. I'm sorry. I I, I really wish I'm just, I'm, you know, we're, we're both, I think Aaron and I are both trying to crawl out of our skin to tell you, but we're just not allowed to yet. Okay. Uh, another question here, would it be better to wait until your new strategy is released to join the trading room? No, you should join the trading room now because until it's released, the trading room does very well, which I just showed you. 
Uh, there's another question about the board, uh, about the thing too, about what I showed you earlier, were any of these re uh, trades repaired? No, I had no repairs today, uh, last week. No repairs at all. Those were all straight buys and sells. No repairs at all. And um, and it would be better to join the trading room now because this way you will be there when we talk about it and we release it and bring it out to the people, right? Uh, and and even if we, you know, even if it's it's not going to be months down the road, but even if it was, what the benefit you're going to get from the trading room right now is going to be far superior to anything out there. Um, and and we make money, and you can just follow us along and make money. Believe me, it's worth it. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. I like this question. If you're going to be releasing a new strategy, why will you still be teaching the old system? Well, because our, our old system is going to appeal to some people, the new system is going to appeal to other people. Some people like bananas, other people like oranges. And we actually have several uh, strategies. We've got the uh, OMG out of the morning gate strategy, which is great for people who are uh, maybe say they, they work during the day and or the pick of the day. And they can't watch. They can't watch. Uh, markets all day long um and uh and yet it's it's a good something you can get in right away the pick of the day is ideal for that as well and um and we also have uh uh the bread and butter strategy and the scalping strategy which is which is what i really love so we have these various strategies and this is going to be one more that is going to be for that particular person who's going to just want to be able to make a lot of money stay in the markets perhaps a little bit longer than 10 30 uh, but let me tell you, you're going to want to be, <laughs> and we don't even know how we're going to work that out, but we're going to figure that out. So, uh, another question here before I wrap it up. So already nine o'clock, do you have any videos or anything we can learn from, uh, before we get into the trading room? Well, you know, I'm glad you asked that. Um, uh, Danielle is asking here if we have any videos or anything we can learn, they can learn from before getting in the trading room. I don't know what experience you have, Danielle, but uh, strangely enough, I saw the question and I and I pulled it up on the website while while we're talking here. Boy, uh, this thing gets stuck, and I it always gets stuck on a really bad shot of me, doesn't it? It's, <laughs> it's, it's never a good shot of me. It's not a, it's not a good picture. It's like uh, you know these these creepy pictures. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, sorry, guys. Okay, so here's the funny thing. Uh, I'm gonna just bring this over here. Um, those people over at Eagle IT have not discovered yet that this uh, ultimate training workshop should probably be taken off now because that's what they were supposed to do. So uh, what I would suggest is, and don't tell them, just go to the website and buy this thing. This is the workshop we had uh, a while back. It's all very current, very, very comprehensive. It, it covers everything. Everything, if you've never traded anything in your life, this is where you got to be introduction options, fundamentals, money management, building confidence, mental aspects. of This is all solid gold stuff, folks. Mental aspects of trading. You got to know this. If you don't have a good grasp on this, you're never going to be successful in the market. I can guarantee you will lose your money if you do not know this stuff. We talk about support, resistance, chart patterns that we use ourselves every day. The Greeks, then we get into our strategies. Aaron's one plus one equals three. Fibonacci, repairing batteries, all of this. And look at the price of this thing. This is absurd. It's still only, uh, you can get it for $9.95. Now, they were supposed to take this off the uh, website. And I don't know what happened. They were just asleep at the switch or something. This is actually a 63% discount off the regular price. Folks, don't hesitate. I would just jump on this and jump on this right away before they discover it and uh, and, and just buy it because they will honor it if you buy it. So you'll find this on the website. All right, this will be on the website right there under, uh, right at the top where it says Ultimate Training Workshop. Second from the right, Ultimate Training Workshop. Click on that, go to the Learn More here, click on that, and then go right down and buy this thing. You're going to get, what is this, what, 10, 11 webinars? Uh, here it is, uh, 11 11 individually, you'd pay over $2,700. 11 webinars, they're about an hour and a half each, roughly, and you're going to get it all. Okay. It's, it's all going to be there. So, anyway. Did you, did you mention? Uh, I don't know if, I don't know if you might, you might have mentioned about how that's the lowest price that we're probably ever going to do in the history of, well, <laughs> of day trade it, spy. Yeah, it, it's never going to be lower than that. That is also a guarantee. It's never going to be lower than that, uh, <laughs> for sure. Like, that's, I'm not kidding about that. So, uh, the price is only going to go up. It's only going to go from there. So, 
Anyway, I don't want to keep you any more, folks. Really, that, go get that. And also the trading room, jump into it, $6.99 for three months. You don't have to worry about it. Extended sessions, where did it go here? Extended sessions, summer hours, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Uh, you get it all, folks. $6.99 for three months. I think with that, I'm going to call it a night. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Aaron. It's been a real pleasure. We'll see you tomorrow morning online. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you, everybody. Yep, thank you. Have a wonderful night, everyone. And there ain't no stopping now You're the one Shine brighter than the moon And the sun Be great at what you do Give it all of you And trust the process And keep your eyes on the bright side I can tell